my name is Nasser Setki, and uh, in the School of Electrical Engineering, uh, Electronics and Computer Science, which consists of two departments, uh, we have used uh, some activities in uh, asynchronous uh, teaching uh, this year. And uh, I will talk about uh, some of these activities that we have implemented uh, uh, in some uh, modules uh, this year. There are many papers uh, in educational research that uh, uh, COVID-19 has accelerated the advances in online learning and particularly uh, with the technology enhanced learning. And uh, this is a paper in Nature. Universities will never be the same after coronavirus crisis. We have used some activities, different types of activities during the modules because it has been a difficult time for both uh, academic staff and students and mostly for students because uh, especially year one students, they were very confused about uh, online learning and uh, synchronous, asynchronous teaching. And we have provided uh, some extra tools to students uh, to help them uh, to ease the difficulty for them. And these are type of uh, uh, screencast or uh, pencast videos and uh, short recorded lectures, uh, providing menu for recorded lectures and uh, in lecture uh, simulations. In different modules, we have provided some short videos or uh, animated uh, GIFs, which are used to explain the basic concepts or a workout of uh, particular problems. Uh, some of them have been based on the students' feedback because some students have asked uh, about a particular problem and when there are many questions about uh, the, uh, a particular problem. Uh, so the best way is instead of answering uh, students one by one is uh, to create a short video to explain uh, the problem to all the students. And uh, these type of activities have been very popular among students because it points out to uh, some basic concepts which the students uh, cannot see very, uh, cannot understand very well, or if they have difficulties on work out of some problems. Some colleagues, including me, we have created YouTube channels and we have uh, uploaded these uh, uh, videos to YouTube for a larger audience. Uh, but because most of our students are international students, and especially students from uh, SJTLU, and uh, many of them, they were studying in China this year. And in China, they don't have a good access to YouTube. And so uh, we have added these uh, videos to uh, Canvas Studio, and uh, which uh, will be available to all the students through the VPN of the university or any other uh, website that they use for university. And so these are the links for the uh, short videos and also uh, they have a link to uh, YouTube is also given. Another activity that has been used uh, in some lectures is splitting recorded lectures to uh, smaller videos. Uh, the impact of length of uh, uh, recorded lectures or general uh, lecture videos and also the style of them have been studied in 
uh, educational research extensively, and uh, these are just uh, two references. Uh, in general, when the recorded lectures or in general uh, lecture uh, videos, they are shorter and especially if there are some specific topics, uh, it would be much easier for students. We already had uh, recorded lectures in normal teaching uh, in classroom uh, recorded lectures and the students always had uh, trouble to sit through the videos to find the point that you wanted to uh, see. Uh, but uh, in some lectures, uh, instead of, uh, for example, one hour lecture, it has been divided to uh, videos of uh, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on the topic, and they are customized by the topic so or subject. So the students, if they think that they need to see more about, for example, one subject, they can just watch that video. To make it better, uh, I used a trial uh, in two modules and using uh, uh, authoring tool, uh, Storyline 360, I uh, created menu for uh, recorded lectures. So it's whole lecture, but uh, the uh, subject or the topic that the students want to uh, revise or for the first time they want to see uh, is selected uh, from a menu and so uh, they can select the menu it's very good for uh, during the revision if they uh, feel that uh, they didn't understand a topic so they can easily find uh, the topic that you want uh, from a menu another activity that has been in few modules uh, is uh, uh, simulations uh, during the lecture. Uh, we had used simulations before during the lecture, but uh, uh, this was uh, on recorded videos uh, this, uh, this year. And uh, uh, simulation is an important part of the teaching and uh, there was uh, some talks this morning about uh, uh, simulation, especially in uh, uh, health education. Uh, in engineering and especially in electrical engineering, uh, simulation has a, a great uh, part, uh, is a great part of the uh, engineering. Uh, it's very easy to explain the concepts for example, if uh, in previous years that I wanted to explain this simple circuit, I had to use many graphs step by step what, will, what is happening. But when I play this uh, simulation uh, in a classroom, so the students uh, can see exactly what's happening in real uh, time. Uh, and also in uh, electronics, uh, simulation is a part of the design process and the students have uh, to learn uh, how to do the simulations and uh, the links to the simulations which uh, the software is available for students uh, have been loaded to uh, the VLE and the students uh, can do the simulations themselves, can change the parameters to see uh, what's the impact of different parameters on the behavior of the circuits. Other colleagues, they have used uh, other types of simulations. Uh, probably uh, you have used uh, GeoGebra. Uh, there are many good simulations there. Uh, but uh, we are concentrating, uh, we have been concentrated on the uh, simulations which have been created by our team, not uh, from the external sources. And uh, colleagues, they all have created uh, very good uh, simulation tools. As I mentioned before, the, there are many uh, publications in educational research about the impact of COVID-19 on uh, uh, the way that we teach. And for example, we are not going back. 
many activities that uh, a few years ago in this conference or other conferences or if we could see in uh, journal uh, papers about innovations in learning and teaching nowadays is a norm if we see that how much uh, uh, especially uh, uh, technology has been uh, uh, in teaching has been improved uh, during uh, uh, these two years. Uh, it's uh, amazing. Some of these activities, they are not just limited to the uh, period of COVID-19 and uh, remote teaching, and uh, they are they can be used in normal teaching. And uh, so we need to reflect on these activities, revise these activities, reimagine, and if they are useful, uh, we can uh, use them in, hopefully when the COVID-19 uh, is over, we can use in normal teaching. Uh, we were planning to uh, evaluate the impact of these activities uh, on students experience and the stu uh, students performance uh, however because there were there was some delay about the fecal uh, uh, application approval uh, so we haven't started the evaluation and now it's too late because the students have already finished their studies but uh, these are the type of activities uh, which uh, are going to implement uh, next semester uh, and uh, so hopefully uh, we can do evaluations uh, after uh, next semester. Thank you very much for listening and I will be happy to answer the questions. <coughs> Thank you very much, Nasa. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I just wanted to say, Nasa, so that you put in, you put you put an incredible incredible amount of work um, into migrating your your teaching you know, from the classroom and sort of like the hybrid approach. There's some really impressive uh, some really impressive um, um, materials and resources you produced there. Absolutely, uh, Zelda, you have a question. Sorry, you're, Zelda, you're on mute. You're on mute. Classic classic error. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just saying that was really interesting to yeah. appear and I'm just wondering out of the new things that you tried, which do you think would, would be the ones that you're going to stick with the most when things hopefully return back to how, you know, the, the way it was? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, because uh, uh, if you go back to the way that it was, we always have uh, recorded lectures. Uh, maybe it's not pre-recorded, but the lectures are usually recorded. And uh, uh, creating a menu for lectures with students, especially for, uh, the, we usually have uh, one hour long lectures, but uh, some lectures are two hours that uh, uh, the effect, uh, effective time is uh, one and a half or mm -hmm. one and 40 minutes. And these are very long students uh, have difficulty even for one hour lecture to find the part that uh, they want to see yeah. and uh, creating a menu for lectures based on the subjects and topics uh, I think it would be very helpful for students. Thank, thanks. Uh, Zoe has a question? Yeah um, sure. It Relating to what you've just um, explained, NASA, um, is this common practice throughout the university, or is it specifically your um, sort of area that that breaks down the recorded lectures? Because this is really interesting stuff. I, I, it'd be interesting to know. Uh, we are not aware of uh, other departments if uh, they have done. But for uh, uh, when I talk to some other colleagues, uh, I realize that. Uh, uh, splitting lectures to uh, smaller parts, uh, they ha have been done in other departments as well. Uh, yeah. But uh, the study that uh, we were doing, it was uh, just uh, on uh, some, a few targeting modules yeah. uh, in uh, 
our school, Department of Electrical Engineering and Electronics, and also Department of Computer Science. Okay, thank you.